Stadium, the site of the IHSA Class 3 Football Championship. Our third game of the day features a pair of undefeated teams, the Monticello Sages at 8-13-0 and the Byron Tigers at 14-0. Glad to have you with us this afternoon at Memorial Stadium as the teams are on the field ready to go. And right behind us, the Byron Tigers make their way on. Along with NBC Sports Chicago Preps insider Edgy Tim, I'm Patrick Reed. And we've got a matchup to a couple of undefeated teams, but coaches in Cully Walter of Monticello and Jeff Boyer of Byron, who have not been in this situation yet in a state title game. No, they haven't. And again, it's, it's so neat to see Monticello got a chance to see some of their fans. And, you know, just the excitement of being here, you can just sense it from being here on the field and talking to the fans and Byron as well. Saw Everett Stein walk by. The guy's a walking Hall of Famer for high school football. Just great, great atmosphere. Excited about this 3A game, no question. And it's going to be raining at field level, so let's send it up to the dry guys in the front <laughs> of Memorial Stadium. We'll be calling the action. In, indeed, Patrick, it is nice and dry up here. We'll take it. You know, you talk about the atmosphere in the field. Big time game means big time players. How about we start with the biggest on the field, Mark? Let's talk about Tyler Ellsbury from Byron. Keep your eye on big number 77. He's one of the top junior linemen in the entire state of Illinois. He's 6'5", he's 295, and he's not done growing yet. He's a road grader up front on offense, and defensively, he's incredibly disruptive. The big guys up front will have a long say in what happens in tonight's outcome. Ah, but somebody who will have another good say about it will be the quarterback for Monticello. That's Braden Snyder. He has had an absolutely fabulous season. He certainly has, Dave. He's an all-stater. He's an incredible leader. He's cerebral. He threw five touchdown passes in the semifinal game. He has 39 on the season, and he is excellent at reading defenses, checking down, and going through progressions. 13-0 versus 13-0 is the 3A state championship, and it's coming your way next here on NBC Sports Chicago. This rain and champagne is not going to keep these Monticello fans away. It's just a short drive here to Memorial Stadium as the Sages get set to take on Byron in the Class 3A championship. Edgy Tim, your keys to the game. We start with Byron. Well, I'll introduce you to the firm, of course, talking about Snodgrass, Stickling, and Messling, the three running backs, all over 1,000 yards this year. If you're Byron, you want to introduce them early and often. Then, of course, for Monticello, hey, your first time here, take it all in, settle in, and play your game. These teams put up some huge score lines on their way to Champaign. We'll return here is Dave Bernhardt. And we'll have it upstairs. Great to have you with us from Memorial Stadium here on the University of Illinois campus. It is time for 3A football, and it's time for a weather report here in Champaign. 47 degrees. We'll take that here on Thanksgiving weekend. That wind will be a factor. It will be blowing from right to left. And, of course, you can see the precipitation that we are experiencing right now. It's a very light rain here in Champaign. Byron will get the ball first. The Tigers at 13-0 on the season. In fact, these are the two number one seeds on both the upper and lower parts of the bracket in 3A. This is how it was supposed to work out. Just outside the 10-yard line. And good field position for Byron to get things started. Tigers at 13-0, coming off a 42-0 shutout win over Hersher in the semifinals. They average 45 points per game. Their quarterback is Ben Carlson. He's a 6'3", 185-pound junior. Look at the completions, 28. Look at the touchdown passes, 12. Yeah, he averages almost 30 yards completion, so when he goes up top, it's big play potential. But there is a running team. There's no doubt about that. And on our first play, there is a flag. That running game is led by, as Edgy mentioned, Isaac Stickler, Ricky Messling, and Drake Snodgrass. These guys average 382 yards a game on the ground. Just punishing. Dead ball. Ball start. Number 19 on the offense. Five yards penalty. 
still first down. And that was the fullback, Ricky Messling. They got a little bit of an early head start. Three 1,000 yard rushers. They come at you from all angles in this double wing offense. And now a little bit of a wishbone look here. Got to leave with a fullback quite often right there on a toss sweep. It'll go to the right wing. That's Drake Snodgrass. Snodgrass has rushed for almost 1,500 yards this year. 12.9 yards per carry for this offense. We mentioned averages 45.2 points per game. We've talked about the skill position players. There's Tyler Ellsbury, the left tackle. Lind, Lance, Clonch, and Hernandez. And you'll see several of these players going both ways for Byron. And this game's going to be decided with the guys up front. Yes, both teams have omnipotent offenses, but it's the guys in the trenches playing with a low pad level that are going to decide things here tonight. This will be Carson. He's going to go up top. There's Snodgrass. Byron will average almost 30 yards per pass completion. They usually pound the ball, then go up top. And this time it was Ben Carlson that goes downfield to Snodgrass. 35 yards on that long ball, all off play action all week long. Monticello has schemed, stop the run, stop the run, extra guys in the box, read your keys up front. And when you go downtown with a long pass play, it can be an explosive. On second and long, becomes first and 10 from inside to 30. Short pickup for Isaac Stickler. That is something you will see here from Byron. They will give equal touches to each of those three backs. Here's the Monticello defense. They're in charge of shutting down this high-powered offense, a unit that gives up 9.1 points per game. The inside the linebackers of tackles Spence and Dawson. The cornerbacks will have to be run support tonight. Brad Bundy, Graham, and Stringer, and up front Kirk, Reffitt, and Hall, along with Riley Austin. On second and short. Snodgrass. We'll set up a third down and five. Good penetration by Monticello. Busting up that play right at the point of attack. And you watch Monticello's defense. You'll see not seven, not eight, but probably ten, ten guys in the box. And maybe just a free safety for security reasons. Number 11 is Matt Kerr. Six sacks on the season. Leads this team. 6'3", 190-pound junior. Also in the backfield now is Zach Alberts. He'll lead the way for Snodgrass. First down for Snodgrass in the seven-yard pickup. So you see Snodgrass taking his time, picking the hole. Sometimes it's better to be late than early when you're a running back. Watch him take his time right there, read it, and then make the nice cut. Plants his left foot before finally being tripped up after a good game by Dawson. Henry Dawson with that tackle. Leads his team with 121 tackles on the season. That's a, that's a busy man, isn't it? He, he just very active the ball, flying to the ball, playing laterally all the time. You see, if you have good eyesight, you could be a good defender. The 35-yard completion is set up. Byron. Snodgrass left side. And another five yards. So maybe about three yards on that pickup. He was down before that ball squirted free for just a moment. Monticello defense. On average, gives up 126 yards rushing, only 86 in the air. And this defense for Monticello is part of a defense that takes the ball away. The Sages from Monticello, plus 22 in turnover margin. Carlson will have to keep it. And it will be third down and long for the Tigers. Yeah, Byron's such a difficult team to prepare for. Defense coordinator Britt Miller's had a week to scheme on this. And there's no doubt it's a game of adjustments. It's all about getting more people defensively than the offensive block. It's a numbers game. It's a chess match up front. Ben Carlson will get the play call. The offensive coordinator is Jeff Boyer, the head coach for Byron. Once again, Alberts is in the backfield. He had a big game in the semifinals. On third and eight, Snodgrass, no room to the outside. Once again, number 11, Matt Kerr sliding down that line of scrimmage. And you see Kerr just shut off a block. It's all about making contact, shed, and then stay square. Good defenders stay square. We mentioned the previous play, keep your eyes, and you can make effective plays fundamentally sound as Kerr. 
This is the exact situation Monticello wanted to put Byron in. Fourth down and long inside the 20 yard line. Carlson to throw to the end zone. Touchdown! Or not. They'll no, say no, he did not come up with it. So the Sages have held. Snodgrass thought he had made a catch. That ball was going to a tight window. Not one, not two, but three defenders from Monticello. The Sages had that covered pretty well. Play action pass. Plenty of time. A thread in the needle. But you got to finish the catch. Carlson put the ball Early in the, the right spot. It is an incomplete pass. The ball will turn over on downs. And it will be first down for Monticello. A bend but not break defense here in the opening drive for the Tigers. And there is Drake Snodgrass. He will go both ways. He's a free safety for Byron. Monticello out of 48 points a game. And they will spread the field. And they are not afraid to throw it. Though they'll stay in the ground here. Short pickup on first down. Not afraid to throw it. That's the quarterback we featured in our opening. Braden Snyder. Big time yards. A 39 to 8. Touchdown to interception ratio. 3,131 aerial yards. And he can spread the ball around to a bevy of receivers. He's got three or four guys. Everybody is dangerous in Cully Walter's offense. And second and six, two straight running play plays. And you saw big number 81, Blake Eater, the swallow up Monticello, 6'4", 185 pounder. Here's the offensive lineup for Monticello. Playmakers in Bundy, Brown, Brad, Stringer, and Graham, and up front. The center, Cody Winky on either side, Spence and Austin Fultz and Wassum on the edges. That's number 35, Alec Bundy. And a third down and long. Down he goes. Asher Brad, the reception, and he was rudely taken to the ground by Colton Ingram. Little inside screen, and Ingram just shed that block. It was set up when you fight off the block. Inside screen right there. And watch him. Just a little bit of an individual play, stepping over the would-be block and making a solo tackle, following the ball back to the middle of the defense. Braden Snyder doubles as the punter, averages about 31 yards per kick. He has a 15-mile-per-hour wind at his back. Zach Alberts, Tyler Camling deep for Byron. This will softly roll to the turf here at Memorial Stadium. Byron will have good field position. Neither team able to get into the end zone. The Tigers move the ball their first drive. They'll get it right back. When we come back here, your 3A championship game on NBC Sports Chicago. That's Jeff Boyer in the middle of the huddle there for Byron. The seventh season for Byron, 61 wins and 20 losses. And we should say his seventh season as a coach because Jeff Boyer was the quarterback on the 1999 Byron State Championship team. Yeah, he has an awful lot of memories. A Byron Tiger born and bred. Assisted at Rochelle for a while, then Byron has been the head coach since 2012. As you mentioned, four conference titles along the way. Second possession for the Tigers. They will get about five yards on first down. And a very familiar face on the sidelines at a state championship ball game is that person right there, Cully Welter. He's in his 10th season at Monticello, 88 wins in those 10 years. However, you will remember him from Alita, where he won three state championships in 11 years. Now, if Monticello can win this game and Welter picks up the win, he will become only the second coach in Illinois state history two win state championships at two different schools. And we'll see the other coach, Tim Rackey from Nazareth Academy tomorrow in the 7A game. A little bit of inside trap there, trying to be diverse in their offense. 
Byron had really tested the perimeter early on in their first series. Now going right up the middle with a quick trap on the inside. Ideal situation here for Byron on third down and a yard to go. Power football up front. He'll come right at Monticello with Messling. Ricky Messling over a thousand yards, 6.9 yards per carry. He's also a thousand yard rusher last year for Byron. 5'9, 190. He's a wrestling state qualifier. Just a strong young man, runs with a low pad level, low to the ground. Good blocker. There are those running backs that we were talking about. Look at those numbers. Look at those touchdowns. 53 touchdowns among those three backs. So no one can you key on in this Byron offense. Messling, another five yards, near five yards on first down. Yeah, we are talking about Jeff Boyer. He played at Byron High School. He played under the legendary Everett Stein. And Everett Stein has a little bit of an impact in this game, Mark. Yeah, Everett Stein lives in Texas. He flew in today and actually talked to the Byron team. He was the pregame talk. Hall of Famer Everett Stein won some state titles. So what a great respect factor between Everett Stein and, and Jeff Boyer. And Boyer said Stein's the best coach he's ever played for or coached with. And so many of the things that Stein was doing back in the 90s, that's what you're seeing here on this field in 2018. Well, what, what Byron does is these guys, their system is in place. And their young men from high school from freshman year on up. They know exactly what they're doing. They know their blocking schemes. They know their defensive read keys. They know their pitch plays. They know it all and the success just perpetuates itself. That's what a program's all about. Byron who picked up 52 yards on its first possession. Now moving deeply into Monticello territory here on their second possession and in another first down. So Byron right now just churned it out. With more smash mouth football. You know, they're getting, going back up the middle a little bit and just moving the chains three and four plays to get a first down, but very effective running over uh, Kevin Clutch on the right side and Eric Hernandez. They're really utilizing those blockers up front. Number 59 there for Monticello's Riley Austin, a four year starter for the Sages. Another first down for Byron and a flag out immediately. Referee Roy Hincamper. Dead ball. False start. On the offense. Number 81. Five yard penalty. Still for the count. That's the second penalty on Byron. Remember, the first one came on our first snap of the game, and the Tigers were able to overcome it thanks to a 35 yard pass from Ben Carlson to Drake Snodgrass. Yeah, and then you talk about self-inflicted wounds and this offense had been churning, 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 moving the sticks, moving the sticks, and then a dead ball penalty really puts a running team at a disadvantage. You have to stay in front of the sticks if you're Byron to be as effective as you possibly can. See one receiver split wide to the left, but on the ground, Snodgrass. Carlson leads the way through the hole. So a quarterback doing a little bit of blocking for his wingback. Now Carlson's 6'3", 185, and when a quarterback does a toss sweep and he goes out and kicks out the defensive end, you just earn an awful lot of respect from your teammates. You see that uh, Carlson runs to the sideline each and every play and gets a play from his coach. There's a somewhat of a question prior to the season as to the quarterback who would take those duties. Carlson is locked on to it. The junior takes his team here to the state championship ball game. It's second down and 11. Hold off the right side. This is Stickler. Isaac Stickler a first down and more inside the 20. Now Isaac Stickler says we just have to finish every play. He did just that on that play, really utilizing his speed and vision. And watch him take care of the football right there, two hands as he sees the defense closing down. 16-yard run for Stickler. So two penalties for the Tigers have been overcome by two big plays. This, first down from the 19. This offense put up 400, 538 yards against Allman, 383 against Lyle, and a running clock against Hersher. That's how explosive they are. 
Messling able to power behind his offensive line to pick up of a couple. This is a Byron team that's been playing with a chip on its shoulder for the last 364 days. They lost to IC Catholic in the Class 3A semifinals, and that was a game that came down to the final seconds. And of course, IC Catholic went on to romp in the 3A championship game. We'll see IC in the 4A game against Bishop McNamara following this ball game. And that's been Byron's mantra, finish the job. Finish each play, finish each practice, finish the season. Three-yard pickup on first down, now to the right side. Stickler tripped up as he goes through the hole. Isaac Stickler on the carry. Nice block at the point of attack by Ricky Messler. By 12, so these tackles. backs block so well for each other. And when you get a good block by your lead man right there, watch him find the first man, seals him off. He actually, Messling, hits two guys, not one, but two, teammate for teammate. Final seconds of the first quarter. Messling just able to follow those big horses up front. Brought down by Riley Austin. This first quarter comes to a close. 12 minutes in the first quarter. Byron had the ball for 10 of them. Yet we are scoreless after one here in your 3A championship game from the University of Illinois Memorial Stadium. It's a happy bunch of Byron fans. They're looking to go in when we come back in the second quarter. And while you were gone, that's the weather that has moved into Champaign-Urbana. Glad to have you with us after one here in your IHSA Class 3A championship. No score. Byron a first down on that pickup. The final carry of the first quarter. They have it first and goal from the nine. There's a Monticello defense that only four times in 13 games has allowed double-digit scoring by its opponents. It's a stiff one being challenged right now. Messling will get a couple. Ricky Messling in the first quarter carried six times, good for 19 yards. Drake Snodgrass, six for 22. Isaac Stickler, four carries for 26. 20 plays run by Byron in the first quarter compared to three for Monticello. Just domination in regards to ball control with this rush offense ahead. They have misdirection in their wing tee. Now second and goal. Carlson will have to settle on just landing, and that's the impact that this rain will have. It is not a heavy rain right now, but it's just enough to affect plays like that. Now you would think that you might see a play action pass here, but Monticello breaking down the film all week long. They know those tendencies as well. Stickler has been probably the most effective to the outside, being an Eminem guy, making guys miss. We'll see if Stickler might get a carry here. He'll come to the near side. Snodgrass will come up about two and a half yards short. It will be fourth and goal. The handoff went to Zach Alberts, and he got it right back to Snodgrass. Watch Monticello's players, though. Stay at home, stay at home, stay at home. And just slow down the ball carry enough right there, allowing help on Snodgrass, not be able to get to the edge and turn the corner to hit pay dirt. That little reach will get the ball all the way to the two yard line. Devin Graham, a nice solo tackle. Six foot senior. Fourth down and goal from the two, looking for our opening score here in your 3A title game. Messling, he's not going to get there. The Monticello defense stands tall and turns away Byron. Well, you see Devin Graham celebrating. I'll tell you what, Matt Kerr, you called his name a few times. Uh, he just blew up that play at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Monticello with a great goal line stance. Monticello will look to go 95 plus yards after that defensive stop by Kerr.
If there were to be a home field advantage in any one of the eight games here this weekend in Champaign, it would belong to Monticello, just a few miles outside of Champaign, playing out of the Illini Prairie Conference, Hyatt County. An enrollment of 527. The season for the Sages last year, it ended in the second round of the playoff to who? To Byron. 21 20. Byron defeated Monticello one year ago in round number two. And that score has been displayed outside Monticello High School here this week. Snyder to throw. Got his team out of trouble. Out to the 13 yard line. He finds Asher Brad for Brad's 58th catch of the year. He has over 1,000 yards receiving. Good route runner. Has a three year starting slot receiver, Brad. They roll the pocket, square to shoulders, on time, on target. Snyder on first down, gets him out of jail. Zach Alberts on the coverage for Byron. And a first down at the 13. That just loosens up the defense quite a bit. See the safeties right now for Byron playing what? About 12, 14 yards deep, keeping everything in front. Cover two. Brad will go in motion. Snyder down at the five yard line. Blake Eater again. Eater has been on two stops tonight. Uh, just disruptive off front, just so fast. He used to think football was a strength game. This is a speed game. He just sheds a block, gets in the backfield. Great solo tackle and a sack. Eater, the smallest Tiger on that defensive line at 185. Tyler Ellsbury, of course, in the middle of that line. 6'5", 295. Eater did a good job using his hands, shedding that block. You see, because Ellsbury requires double teams as well, so often. Snyder from his own end zone. The screen. And Rue. Alec Bundy down the sideline. And now it's a race. Bundy versus Alberts. Touchdown, Monticello, 95 yards. Oh, my, what an explosive play. Just a little toss to the outside. And then speed kills, does the rest. Grab the record books and see how many more have been greater than 95. See if we can pick up the block. There was one block that sprung this whole thing right there. I believe it was 59. I got to double check that. It looked like he was the guy, Riley Austin, that may have sprung that touchdown. Luke Rudolph to attempt the extra point. After stopping Byron on a long time consuming drive Monticello strikes in quick fashion 95 yard touchdown pass for a seven to nothing lead Alec Bundy he gets the short pass he gets the block and he will turn it into a big time score here in Champaign here it is in straight drop back just a little screen set up and then once he gets to the sideline, it's a good stock block down, downfield about the 35. Wide receivers can be a best friend of their teammate. You attack, you buzz, you make contact, and you drive as a wide receiver. The ABCDs are blocking, and we saw it on the edge right there as Monticello in Bits Creek fashion. That is a 3A record for longest touchdown pass and catch of the season. Let's go down to the sidelines and Patrick Reed. Guys, when Alec Bundy went the distance there, you heard a huge roar go up from the Monticello crowd. That's because, as Dave mentioned earlier, the proximity from Monticello to Champaign is not very far, and this community really gets behind its stages. Team Cully Welter told us this week that the community takes such joy in the level of success that this team has. And consider for a school that has an enrollment of just 527, a thousand student tickets were gone this week when they were first made available in just three hours. That number today for Monticello fans could exceed 6,000. It is a town where when you come off I-72 into Monticello, signs and support of the Sages follow you all the way in and towards the school. They love their sages. You see the photos from Monticello. Nobody's home there tonight. As Patrick <laughs> said, if 6,000 people are here in this stadium, 
I assume the fire department, police department, and that's going to be about it. And loose ball squibbing onto the turf. And now Byron. How about that? The long drive, time consuming drive. 14 plays, 54 yards, all running plays. They knocked it down right deep into the end zone, or deep into the red zone. Monticello gets the stop, and then Monticello in a blitzkrieg fashion scores on the long touchdown pass. Byron will look up on the board. About nine minutes to play in the first half. Your 3 8 championship ball game, the Tigers. Thought they were headed in for a score. Stopped on fourth down inside the two yard line. And they will not deviate from their offense. This is how it is in Byron, and it's how it's been for years, and how it's going to be all night tonight. Well, just playoffs alone, they put up 50 points against Almond, 28 against Princeton, 49 against Lyle, and then 42 against Hersher. So they won't blink. But I will tell you what, with the running game that they have, they can't get behind two or three scores. They have to stay within striking distance of this Monticello team. Stickler threw in about six yards before he was touched. Brought down out there by number three, Asher Brad. A lot of players, of course, here in 3A going both ways. And the rain is uh, increasing in its intensity here in Champaign. Asher. We are expecting rain for pretty much the rest of this evening. Asher Brad's mom, Tanya, the leader of the Sage Moms Group that does so much for this program. And Stickler will bobble. He'll come up with it and survive. Here is that road for Byron to get here. And you look at those big numbers at 28 points against Princeton. That along with the regular season game against Genoa Kingston in week number eight. Those are the tightest games by far that Byron has played. In fact, that week eight game, it was a 21-14 win by Byron over Genoa Kingston. And according to Jeff Boyer, that kind of re-energized his team. He said they start reading a few too many headlines. Byron, the, the top-ranked team in 3A all season long. They'll stay on the ground, Snodgrass. So amazing to watch this Monticello defense. You get a shot of them as they align against Byron, you'll see eight and nine people creeping up the box within two or three yards of the line of scrimmage, basically saying our goal is to stop the run. Stop the run, stop the run. If you beat us on top, over the top, that's okay. There's a look at the lineup. Look at all those gold hats in the box between tackle and tackle. Everybody within three or four yards. Only about a yard, maybe two here on third down. It will be fourth down and four, and it looks like the Tigers here in midfield will look to punt. Ben Carlson, the punter for the Tigers, and that will necessitate Monticello hustling out their punt return team. Asher Brad will be deep. There is your quarterback slash punter. Averages about 37 yards per kick. He has the wind at his back. Carlson just gets it away. And no bargain there. He's happy just to get rid of it. And Monticello, with a 7-0 lead, will have great field position. A 95-yard touchdown pass. Sage is on the board looking for more. Wait a minute, there's not a 50 on here. Raindrops dripping off of the goalpost here at Memorial Stadium. Temperature in the mid 40s. And the 3 8 championship game finds Monticello. Ball at midfield, first and 10, and a 7 0 lead. Braden Snyder with a touchdown pass to Alec Bundy just moments ago. He's a dual threat quarterback. To the near side and Devin Graham. Graham is the type of receiver that will go up and get the ball. They just want to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Graham, 45 catches for 947 yards this year. He's a multi-starter. And what I mean by that, three-year starter on defense, two-year starter on offense. Yeah, he's good at such a receiver as well. 
And there is your distribution of yardage and touchdowns to this high powered Monticello attack. They've outscored their opponents 48.3 points per game to 9.1 this season. Snyder to the wide side of the field. That play took a long time to develop. And on the stop, number 39 is Tyler Camling. Offensive linebacker, or an outside linebacker last year, now a cornerback. Snyder letting that play develop, though, show good arm strength, trying to get speed in space one-on-one. -on -one. They got Stringer out there, but it's good solo tackle out in space. When you have corners that can come up and make stops one-on-one, -on -one, that's the sign of a special defense. First catch of the night for Stringer. A third down and seven for the Monticello Sages. Knocked down at the line. That may have been big old number 77, all 6'5 of him, Tyler Ellsbury with the knockdown. Edgy Tim's on the sidelines. He's right in the middle of this rain and wind. Edgy, what do you have? Hey, guys, I'll tell you what. I'm absolutely amazed at how well Monticello's skills have handled this weather so far. It is not easy weather at all with the wet and the rain to throw the ball and make catches, but uh, Monticello's making it look pretty easy so far. Well, in fact, Edgy, five of six for 107 yards for Braden Snyder, but yet the Sages will have to punt it away. These two high-powered offenses, we only have one touchdown on the board. Both teams have schemed incredibly well defensively and played fundamentally sound defensively. Ball takes a kind roll for Byron, but the Tigers will have it from their own 17-yard line, trailing seven to nothing. Byron made the trip from the Rockford area down here to Champaign today. They actually stopped off in El Paso for a walk-through enrollment of 477. They're representing the Big Northern Conference. Jim Kahn, the athletic director at Byron High School. As we mentioned last year, the Tigers got all the way to the semifinal, lost in heartbreaking fashion. Why see Catholic prep? They had 18 starters returning. They knew they had a good shot being here. You know, you take a look at those Byron uniforms, and for folks in Byron, they may have the, uh, the interest at home watching. Usually the away jerseys are white tops and white pants, but the black pants tonight are pretty special. Black pants are significant because that is a throwback in respect in memory of the 99 state championship team that wore black and white, and here they are trying to repeat 19 years later. Around the right side. First down, big yardage for Isaac Stickler, six foot, 200 pound junior. Stickler on the carry. Stickler, 1,323 yards rushing coming into this game. Well, Stickler's been pretty effective. Look at him lower his shoulder, and he just puts a hit on Bundy as he comes up to make the stop. Two excellent football players, mano mano, right there. Carlson on first down to the near side. Floats it there for Zach Alberts to the 35 yard line. So Carlson, who came into this game having attempted only 48 passes, has completed a couple. He has a 35 yarder and now a 30 yard pass completion. Well, Alberts got separation. Why? Because they threw that pass on first down. Monticello run, run, run mentality. They go play action pass. Alberts creates separation and a well thrown ball by the quarterback. Stickler upended just as he crosses the line of scrimmage. You kind of feel a rhythm developing here in this Byron offense. Well, that big that big explosive play to Alberts opens up that momentum. Momentum's a choice. You decide we're going to take control of this game or not. Uh, Monticello had it early. Byron trying to regain it with a drive right here of their own. Just too strong an offense to keep down for very long. Again, all 22 players inside the half mark. To the outside. Snodgrass will be inside the 15 yard line. You called it, Dave. You have 22 players basically within 10 or 8 yards of each other. And once his ball is bumped to the outside, it's Katie bar the door. Look at three men, power football right there, a crushing block at the point of attack. 
And a nice job by Ben Carlson leading the Calvary, his own, the own quarterback, with a crushing block at 6'3", 175, 180. He's a strong guy. As Henry Dawson had to push Snodgrass out of bounds, quickly to the line. Here comes Stickler again. Stickler looking to turn the corner. Isaac Stickler, touchdown. And once again, once again, it's Carlson with the last seal on the inside. Stickler's been their most effective runner. He got to the edge. Once he got to the edge for that 14-yard touchdown run, it was just his speed to get the outside. Look at one, two, three white shirts. Lead blocking and just a little bit too late for Monticello right there with Bundy pushing him out of bounds, but Stickler squirting it up and getting it done into the house. And it will be Aiden Lambert, 58 of 64 in extra points today. He'll look to tie this one up. Byron marches the field, 30 yard pass completion. For Carlson to Alberts, the key play, Stickler, the touchdown run. And with 3.53 to play here in the first half, your 3A title game, we're tied at seven. Yeah, both offenses with a touchdown on the board. Both defenses have been somewhat stellar. And here's that toss pitch they like so much. They pull the backside guard with a nice power play, a good block there by Peyton Lynn. And again, we've just been bragging and bragging in, in regards to the backs blocking for each other. And that's something that Jeff Boyer has actually commented to us about how much fun it is to watch his running backs, his skill guys, block for each other and complement each other. This is an offense that averages 8.9 yards per carry on the ground. It's been two passes today that kind of loosened up the defense somewhat. Isaac Stickler with that touchdown run, his 18th of the season. One of the great traditions in high school football comes from Byron High School. This is a hog trailer that's being pulled up on the first round game. Okay, so your first game that you play at home in the playoffs, the hog trailer comes onto the field. So what's up with the hogs? Well, tradition is we'll park it at the 50, we'll open the door, and we'll let the hogs out. <laughs> it's a great, great high school tradition. And it is something that this has gone on since the Everett Stein days at Byron High School. So. If you're in that trailer, you're one of the big hogs up front, and your team is called back to the state playoffs. I love it. They had that trailer rocket, didn't they? <laughs> and they rocked it down the field to tie this game at seven, and now the Sages are not a seller. You know, and one may say or may ask, you know, what is a Sage? Okay, well, a Sage is just a name that was given in the 1920s by the editor of the Champaign Gazette newspaper, and he just assigned nicknames to athletic programs in the area. So what he, the editor did is, you may know Thomas Jefferson, he lived in Monticello, Virginia. Jefferson was known as the Sage of Monticello, hence the nickname assigned to Monticello High School, the Sages. Now you did your research on that one, or did you just happen to know that? That's just something that just, <laughs> just, just common flowed. knowledge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uncommon now. Good description of a unique nickname in Monticello, the Sages. The deep pitch. And a little bit of a seam. All of a sudden, there was some room that appeared there for Asher Brad. Asher Brad. And oh, Asher there. Brad on this play, very good timing right here by Monticello as far as yeah, the execution is concerned. Because Braden Snyder did a good job timing that pitch. He let Asher Brad get right behind him and turn and go downhill when he took that pitch. Here's your time of possession with about three minutes to play here in the first half. Byron with 15 and a half minutes of possession time. Monticello with four minutes and 31 seconds. Obscene discrepancy. Screen, and screen over the middle. And enough players stayed home. You see number 77, Tyler Ellsbury. He used up a lot of space in the middle of the field. He was helped out there by Kevin Clunch, the inside linebacker. Clunch basically a tackling machine for them. From the linebacker position, he really leads their defense. Two years off conference. And this is a defense 
a buyer that has 15 interceptions. They've picked their opponent 15 times tonight, or excuse me, on the season. Tonight, not yet. Monticello needing a couple of yards to keep this drive moving. Snyder with some time. That's a first down to Bundy. Across midfield. This is a combination of Braden Snyder to Alec Bundy that has produced over a thousand yards receiving that particular combination combined. Bundy does a nice job just kind of sitting below the zone there waiting for that pass and delivering it. Snyder didn't rush. He knew he had his man out in the flat well run route catches the ball gets yards after the catch. They move the sticks on a nice little toss. Alec Bundy obviously happy to be playing in his championship game for more reasons than one. I'll tell you about it after this play. On first down. Snyder, this would be a tough throw. An incomplete pass. Well, Alec Bundy, he's a baseball player, and this summer he's on his way to an early morning baseball game and was involved in a very, very bad automobile accident. And you saw pictures of the car, that number 35, that young man very lucky to survive. Yeah, multi-sport athlete did that morning. Didn't know if there'd be survival that morning. Didn't think about football. His family didn't, but just getting him well. Now he finds himself out on the field. Thankful to be healthy this Thanksgiving holiday time and thankfully playing the state championship. Great continuing to fall here in Champaign. Screen now to Bundy. He'll have to do it on his own. We run out of bounds by Colton Ingram. And really nice job staying at home. And Tyler Canley helping out as well, turn that play back inside because they faked one way, then the throw back to Bundy. But when the defense keeps their eyes, stays at home, it's tough to get any misdirection going. Our two head coaches tonight, Cully Welter from Monticello, Jeff Boyer for Byron, they both run the offenses for each of these teams. Now it's Cully Welter. He'll try to design something for a third down and seven. And now he needs a little more time. Play clock is running down. So Monticello will take a timeout. 61 seconds to play in the first half. Coming up later, of course, we'll have our 4A championship ball game. That will be IC Catholic Prep moving up from 3A to 4A this year, looking to go to their third straight state championship trophy that they'll be able to hold, ho hoist up into the air and they'll be taking on Bishop McNamara the Fighting Irish into the 4A championship ball game that will be a rematch of a game played earlier this year between two conference opponents at 21 20 last second victory and Bishop McNamara has a chance for the second game against IC Catholic That's an interesting shot right there of the defensive Huddle for Byron, you saw the size of Tyler Ellsbury, already several offers from Division I schools. He's an Illinois Football Coaches Association All-State selection. Ellsbury, the brother of Jacob, who played here in 2015. Three other brothers played at Byron, went on to play at Coke College. Dustin, Nick, and Brandon Ellsbury. On third and seven. Open. Inside the 20, inside the 15, and down to the 10-yard line. What a nice strong ball. They want to go tempo right now. Braden Snyder telling his team, get to the line, get to the line. This is just a little skinny post. He gets it over the linebackers in front of the safeties. They move the sticks for 34 yards on that explosive play. And that went to Asher Brad. It will be first down and goal from the 10. Snyder to the end zone. Unable to come up with it in the end zone. Brad says, my ball, I should have had it. 
second and goal with 42 seconds to play in the half. 5'10", 145, a senior. They go back to back with Brad. Basically the same route, a little bit of skinny post. He just took his man, planted the outside, busted it back to the inside. It's a ball that he would like to have back. He's such a fine receiver, great hands. Receivers can catch the ball with their hands. You don't want to catch your body. Catch it out in front of you, grab it, be strong. Good coverage on the play by Zach Alberts. Looking for the go-ahead score in the final minute of the first half in your 3A championship game. Throw, run, sack. Loss of yardage. It was Brad. That play took a long, long time to develop. And an excellent call by you in regards to Brad's eyes were downfield the whole time. That was definitely, it was reverse. As he came to from left to right, he had an option to throw the ball downfield or keep it himself. He kept his eyes downfield, kept his eyes downfield. Nothing there and had to, had to pick it up and try to get any kind of offensive production he could. It was Kevin Clonch along with Blake Eater. Play call from Cully Walter once again. Cully Walter in the middle of that Mon uh, Monticello huddle. We're up here with winter coats and gloves on. He's wearing his shorts still. <laughs> <laughs> he's feeling no yeah, pain. Not, no, not when you're in a state title game. Yeah, he, that means he's wore shorts for 13 games. Number 14, he's not changing. There they are. Look at that. So Cully Walter comes here to his alma mater. He played, or he was a stripper in the track team at the University of Illinois after a three-sport athlete at Muhammad Seymour High School nearby Muhammad, just down the road. Yeah, so been local his whole life. Very fortunate. Need to get in the end zone. On third down and goal. That's where they will head. And that ball just floated up. Running the crosswind a little bit. It'll be fourth down. The intended receiver was Devin Graham. Well, they went three by one, three to the far side, and then Devin Graham one on one on the near side. Flag down will sort that out. But they threw back against the grain on that pass. This flag is thrown on the far side of the field. There may have been a little movement in the backfield. Yeah, I think it came from that three by one set. We were talking about the three wide receivers on the far side. Somebody stepped forward. Illegal shift on the offense. Two players are in the same time and not reset. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Well, which way does Monticello go here? They're bringing their kicker out. That's Luke Rudolph. He's two of seven in field goals this year. As long as a 30. He is a soccer player in Monticello High School. Now he'll kick for the lead. The final seconds of the first half in the 3A championship game. Hard field goal attempt. Out of the hold of Brad. And it goes through. Wow. It wasn't pretty, <laughs> but it's enough for a 10 to 7 lead. Uh, I call that one ugly but effective as he gets an awful lot of congratulations. Put three points up on the board by his teammates. Rudolph 5'11", 130. A diminutive little dynamo who got that one somehow to just go through. He's at the near hash mark. And I'm not sure that didn't clip yep, it the did. right part of the goalpost, the upright, and just sneak on through. A little body English there. <laughs> yeah, it's in. Yeah. Kind of like one of my putts, but it doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> so Monticello takes the ball down. The final couple of minutes here. They take the 10-7 lead. So we have two things going on here. One, we have the competitive type of football game we thought we'd have, but we might have guessed it would be, you know, 21 20 here at the half or whatever. So both defenses have really played well, and quite clearly, offensively, both these teams have playmakers, a plethora of playmakers that can bust one on any, any given play. Luke Rudolph is going to say he drilled this one in the state championship game. Watch it hit the upright and. 
fall just behind the crossbar. You see how close <laughs> it fell behind the crossbar. It landed on the white paint just beyond the end line. Both officials doing a good job looking at each other like, who's going to make that call? But once it, once it crawled over, it was an easy one to make. It definitely went through. That probably squibbed us. Byron will have to go about 69 yards in 21 seconds to tie or take the lead here in the final moment of the first half. So the reason they would squib right there is Byron a running team. Byron with a 70 yard field to go through with only 21 seconds. And by squibbing that you get it to up back. You keep the ball out of the playmakers hands. No chance for any kind of long kickoff return touchdown. See how the Tigers are left to play this final 21 seconds. Everybody is still in tight. A little misdirection. About a five yard pickup. It's not grass with the carry. And this clock will wind down to zero. Byron with the time of possession advantage. Monticello with the scoring advantage. A 95 yard pass, short pass, long run. From Braden Snyder to Alec Bundy. Put Monticello on top, 7 0, and then an effective drive capped off by a 14 yard touchdown run by Isaac Stickler from Byron. Tied this game at 7, but here in the final four minutes of this first half. A Luke Rudolph field goal. Gives Monticello the 10 7 lead. Let's go down to the field and hear from Coach. Cully, I mean, you gotta love this weather. Your kids are your kids are playing like it's like it's a 70 degree sunny day out here. How are your kids handling these elements? Uh, we're doing the best we can. Uh, that, it, you just have to adapt to the situation, and uh, you know we've we faced these situations before, and uh, hopefully we hang in there. Just overall thoughts before you go into the locker room. Well, uh, we we know Byron's got a great running attack, and it, and we got a way to to slow them down in the second half. Well, thanks, Cully. Appreciate right, thanks, it. Guys, we'll send it back up to you. Cully Walter, Illinois High School Football Coaches Hall of Famer, just went into the Hall of Fame this year. He already has three state titles at Alito. And here tonight. Monticello 10, Byron 7. It's halftime in the Class 3A championship game. Back in rainy Champaign. Oh, no, it's gorgeous here. What are you talking about? It's always beautiful. Look at the dry guys upstairs, and we're down here. Patrick Reed, Edgy Tim with you. And, uh, Edgy, looking at that first half, obviously Monticello got that little bit of help there to get that field goal, get that lead, but impressed with their poise. And you mentioned that to Cully Welter. Yeah, very much so. I mean, again, it's it's these are not the best of conditions and you know, their kids are handling it like pros. I mean, you know, again, just watching the passing game and it's wet, gloves get slick, everything gets slick, but you know, Monticello parents probably sent them out to play in the rain because they just have not been phased at all. Very, very impressed and and Byron as well. I, I just think that uh, they've settled in a little bit, able to get that touchdown late here in the second quarter. And, and I think both settle down a little bit but with these conditions if they don't improve it, it's going to be kind of a back and forth kind of lower scoring game for sure. And while we're keeping it to Monticello, Braden Snyder and his crew had some chance to work offensively and in the air. They had time. He had time to make good throws and this may be the best passing game we've seen so far in the three today. Yeah, very much so and, and again just just very smooth. We talked about first time being on the big stage. I think Patrick they've handled it very very well here in the first half very well they have a huge crowd behind them oh, as well too crowd. and that really adds to the atmosphere and in the conditions that gives you a little bit of an extra juice well it does you've got the juice because it's your first time here and and no one wants to come out to a quiet crowd and, and when you have like literally did anyone i hope 
there's someone left in Monticello because I, I don't know they're all there back is. here and just a tremendous showing. And you could feel the energy down here. You felt it. I felt it. And the kids coming out of the tunnel felt it. It makes a difference, trust me. And they took that momentum and really carried it through the whole first half. And when Alec Bundy roared in with that long touchdown, you could feel it throughout the stadium. They don't care how wet it is. The Byron fans don't either. Their Tigers trail Monticello by three at halftime. You're in Champaign. The Monticello marching band is on the field here in Champaign for their halftime performance. Their team leading in this Class 3A championship game by a 10-7 count. Edgy Tim, let's take a look at some of the highlights. And we're looking at Byron, and they really stepped into the role looking like they are championship ready from the outset today. Yeah, again, you just watch them defensively getting pressure and, and, and again, just causing trouble with the run game. Again, that's a big, strong defensive front for Byron, no question. And as we mentioned, Monticello and its ability to protect its quarterback, so has Byron and Ben Carlson. They've done it on the ground, they've done it on the air. He's looked just as comfortable. Well, and he has, and they've done a nice job in the passing game. You have to mix things up a little bit. We know what works for Byron, but you got to keep things off balance. Isaac Stickler working on the ground as well. He will take it outside, right side, in for the touchdown. That is the only score Byron has so far as we make our way towards second half play. So, Edgy, we've broken it down. We've seen what both Monticello and Byron can do. They can move the ball just fine, even though it's raining. What do we expect in the second half? Well, you, you kind of have to stick with what got you here, what your game plan is. If you're Monticello, you're going to continue to spread the wealth around a little bit offensively. Byron, run the ball. But most importantly, Patrick, hold on to the foot. It's going to be easy as this rain continues to come down have to hold on to the football because again field position could be a big big factor here you cannot turn the ball over deep in, in your own zone just can't happen but a relative luxury here compared to most games around the state we're playing on turf most teams didn't last week it's still raining but lock it down yeah i mean i mean compared to a week ago this is kid, these kids will love it these are fantastic conditions because <laughs> you're not in a mud pit you're not you know fighting for your footing the footing's good Hopefully it should hold out and we should finish with a really strong half. We love it too, right? Yeah, we're here. The ba ba their band's here. Let's go. We're, we're here. Let's play. We're good. Stay dry wherever you are. It's halftime in Champaign. Monticello with a three-point lead on Byron. We'll be back with the second half after this. All right, we're back here at halftime, and uh, Coach, fill us in. What'd you tell your kids at the half? I think we just got to keep doing what we're doing and uh, eliminate our mistakes. I mean, balls on the ground that can't happen, and we got to finish drives. If we do those two things, we're in a lot better shape. I got to imagine ball security, as you mentioned, had to be one of the top bullet points addressing the kids in the locker. Room. Absolutely, and they'll get that cleaned up this half. I'm confident in them. Great. Does the weather, does this change your strategy at all? I know you guys are predominantly run. Does it really change anything? Not really. It kind of plays into our hands. I, I kind of like it. And, uh, you know, we just got to keep doing what we're doing. I thought we moved the ball well in that first half, to be honest, and uh, just got to finish it. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck in the second thank you. half. Appreciate it. All right. Back upstairs to Dave and Mark. All right. Thank you very much, Edgy. That was Jeff Boyer. Of course, he's in his seventh season at Byron. He won a state championship at Byron as the quarterback of the 1999 state championship team a team that some feel may have been the best 3a team ever and as we take a look at our first half stats mark the, the one comment that uh, jeff boyer mentioned was you know we're fine you know and indeed i think both teams have been able to do what they have done all season long well you look at that and byron has 11 first downs compared to just four for monticello and the time of possession proves that as well you take a look at plays which isn't up there but Byron's run 36 plays compared to 18 for Monticello. So the ball control has been there. Coach Boyer just talked about, the yes, an offensive player. He knows where his cut's at. He knows where he's going to make a move. Advantage offense, advantage run game right now. And as far as Monticello, here's what this team does. Other teams run more plays. Monticello scores more points. That's been their modus operandi. That's what's happened here thus far tonight. You see that 163 yards in the air. 95 of that came on a short little pass to Alec Bundy. And, and you know, you get the, the highlights out of that play, but 
the reason that play was able to be run the way it was was because of the defensive stop that Monticello got inside a five yard line on fourth down. Yeah, they got a third and fourth down stop set up. They got a, a ball out to about the five yard line, had a little bit of room to work, a little flip pass, a screen, if you will, and Bundy Katie bar the door down the sideline, just speed. His 100-meter time was, in her 100-yard dash time was, but he had not one but two blocks downfield and did the rest, teammate for teammates, helping each other out on stock blocks downfield. And helping each other out, and a little bit of stretching here on a cool night in Champaign, and it is wet. We're at halftime, about three minutes to go before we get started at the kickoff of the second half. Monticello, first time ever in a state championship ball game, and they lead it at halftime, 10-7 over Byron. us here on a cold, rainy, and windy evening, late afternoon here in Champaign, Illinois, University of Illinois, Class 3A Championship Football with Patrick Reed, Edgy Tim, and Mark Lindo. I'm Dave Bernhard. We start the second half, and inside the five-yard line, and now the 10, now the 15, to the 30, and a loose ball, and out of all of that, Monticello will give up the ball and Byron will have it to start the second half at midfield. Well, wow. Got an incredible play to start things. That ball skipped, jumped, hopped. You know, football, it's not round. It's that weird shape. You see a big seam, a big hole, and then the strip from behind. A very nice individual play by Byron for the backside strip by Tyler Camling to make the strip. The recovery by Aiden Lambert. He kicked the ball off. But just like that, Byron to start at midfield. Drake Snodgrass. He will get five on first down. He couldn't have drawn it up any better if you were a Byron fan. Snodgrass 55 yards in the first half, 60 now. So even though they haven't got the big chunk plays at Byron, their game is a churn and ground and a pound of they are with some of this uh, wing T, a little bit of misdirection, a lot of toss sweeps. Win not normally a factor for Byron. They will be going against it here, however, in the third quarter, and Mustang will get five plus. He'll roll forward for a first down. The longer Byron has the ball here in the third quarter, the less time that Monticello will be able to work with this wet wind. Definitely keep away. Nice block on the left side. Tyler Ellsbury, the guy we've talked about so many times. Peyton Lynn, Jack Lenz, those guys, they ran right over that little bit of fullback power right on the inside. Messling's able to pick a hole, and the chunks are coming. Five and seven yards here in the first three plays. The ball from midfield to inside the 35. A little inside handoff there back against the green. They went with a fullback up the middle and then a little bit of counter action with the wingback. Strength and power will take the ball close to a first down. Byron yeah, yeah, yeah. averages from 82 yeah. yards on the ground. They had 151 at halftime. Well, they actually have two down territory here, four down territory, two to play. You would think they'd go fullback right here. Only need a yard. Now they're going to pitch the stickler. They'll get to the outside enough for the first down. We had five different Monticello players looking to get after the ball. Stickler did not give it up, and the chains will move. Opening drive here in the first two minutes of the third quarter. See Ellsbury, 77, get out. He pulls from the tackle position, gets just enough of a chip on the DB against the oncoming Luke Stringer to free that first down. Pull back again, Messling. 
He will have another first down. And this is the Byron offense in full force. Remember Monticello had the opening kickoff of the second half, gets it out of the 50. The force fumble caused by Camling, the recovery, and now from their own 50, Byron just churning and crowning and getting their attack pounded. That is a strong young man to hang on to that ball in these wet conditions. Messling will get it again, and this time will be stopped for a short gain. Byron looking for the score in the opening moments of the third. Messling only 5-9, but 1-9. Very strong, strong upper body, strong lower body. Showed great leg drive right there. And Byron staying in front of the chains. Everything on this drive has been second and five, second and six at the most. They've done a nice, effective job. Ricky Messling, a wrestling state qualifier. He will lead the way here for Snodgrass. Great Snodgrass just outside the five, couple of yards short of the first down. Well, you got a back blocking, you got a fullback blocking, you got a quarterback blocking. It's we're against you, we're gonna push the pile right here. Look at all those white shirts. One, two, three, four, five. Hat on hat contact right there. It's in the trenches where this drive has been won. Messling will drive through for the go-ahead score. Twenty-second touchdown of the season. This one puts his team into the end zone and ahead. Just power football off the left side. A little toss sweep. See Messling lined up. He's going to get this ball and know exactly what to do with it on that handoff. Aiden Lambert will look to push the lead to four. Byron 14, Monticello 10, taking advantage of a turnover on the kickoff, marching 50 yards methodically for the score. It took them only about three minutes. Byron looking to win a second state title, the first coming in 1999. Byron scoring in their opening possession here in the third quarter. The Hogs leading the way for the Tigers. The Hogs up front on that offensive line. And there is the Hog trailer that comes out to Byron in the first round of the state playoffs every year, the first home game. Well, they are not pig hogs in there. They are offensive and defensive hogs in that trailer. They bring them out in the trailer. They let them loose. And they have been loose here in the state playoffs here in 2018. And if you're on the inside of this hog trailer, this was from about four years ago, this video. That's what it's like when they pull you on the track and they let you free. That is one of the great high school traditions. Classic video right there. Those Hogs led a nine-play, 50-yard drive all in the ground. Took three minutes and 19 seconds, but Monticello, good field position here to start their first touch from scrimmage. Snyder over the middle in traffic. Coverage on the play from Drake Snodgrass. Got a hand on the ball. The intended receiver was Bundy down the middle. Little adjustment there. Byron has a safety over the top on Bundy. Watch his double coverage right there. First down throw. But there is not one but two white shirts there. Double coverage. In respect to this Monticello passing game. It's the first time Monticello has trailed here tonight. He turned away Byron inside the two yard line in the second quarter and turned around with a 95 yard score to put the Sages on the board. Snyder, he has some space. And that will be a yard short of the first down. Good throw on the run. He connected with Devin Graham. He is so effective as Braden Snyder. He is so effective as Braden Snyder when he rolls in the pocket. This Monticello team seven times regular season and two of their last three playoff games have won with a running clock. So very uncharacteristic for them to be trailing right now. Devin Graham with the catch. He has four receptions for 198 yards in the first round win over St. Joe Ogden, a big play receiver. 
44 plays by Byron, just 20 for Monticello this juncture. Looking for a yard, they'll get it and more. Inside the 40, and Ian Williams stay in bounds. It was Graham. We talked about his big plays receiving. He turns one in running. And here he comes right at you. He was hoping to tightrope this sideline. That was about as far as he could get. Good job knowing where he was on the field. Nice little late stop block by Asher Brad helping Graham get an extra two or three yards as he was dancing toward the boundary. Snyder to keep it. Snyder a first down. He's near the 20. We talked about Braden Snyder's passing numbers, throwing for over 3,100 yards coming into this game. He's also rushed for 478 yards this year. Well, he runs like a fullback. He's got that strength, that upper body strength at six foot 195. They pull the guard on the near side, who comes back and puts a really nice block on the. Big number 77 we've been talking about all night long, that being Tyler Ellsbury. Good job by the offensive line. Braden Snyder's dad, Matt, is an assistant coach on this Monticello team. And the flag comes out before the snap. We get the momentary silence. Well, the Monticello fans are out in full force. Byron fans are as well, though in a different location. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. With the direction, of, with the direction of the wind and rain, the Byron fans have tucked themselves for the most part up underneath that upper deck here at Memorial Stadium. The Hardy ones are down low, so you put those two together, we have a massive crowd here tonight for your 3A championship ball game. First negative yards via penalty by Monticello tonight. Snyder will keep it again. Gets a block on the outside. Snyder inside the 20. He gets the penalty yardage back and a little bit more. A little bit of sleight of hand as they go. A little bit of a read right there by Snyder. Watch the defense. There's the read right there. He's looking right at the defensive end. When they cover up on the back, Snyder decides to keep it himself. It's all predicated on reading what the defense does. Zone read offense right now by Monticello getting Snyder involved in the running game. I like Bundy in the vicinity as well. Yeah, and I don't know what the play call was, but normally when two receivers are in the same area, that was double post pattern. All you're doing is bringing defenders together as well. So maybe a mix up, not sure, but maybe a mix up having two receivers within two or three yards of each other right there. Something on that play card is a play that will get you eight yards or more. That's what Monticello needs. Snyder to the near side, caught, end zone, touchdown. Alec Bundy and Monticello will go on top. There's some misdirection, execution personified right there. Bundy says, why not me? The fake handoff, the read, if you will, and then the throwback. He gets enough air under, there's the fake. There's the roll opposite and the throwback. And he just lets his receiver, Bundy, run underneath that ball. And a little bit of breakdown in the secondary. Byron turn around, find the football, and good things will happen. But execution right there. Monticello, their aerial game is in high octane on that drive. Second touchdown pass from Snyder to Bundy tonight. And for quarterback Braden Snyder, his 41st touchdown pass of the season. A seven play, 60 yard drive that took a minute 53. It caps off on this play, and Monticello will take a 17 14 lead into the timeout.
Asher Brad, a couple of touchdown receptions tonight. The first of 95 yards. This for 20, and we trade the lead back and forth. Dave Bernhard, Mark Lindo, Edgy Tim O'Halloran, and Patrick Reed with you here from Memorial Stadium in Champaign. A good one in Class 3A. Well, good teams always answer. Monticello came right back at it. The Tigers to get their hand on the ball once again. And they'll start just shy of the 35 yard line. So each team has had the ball once here in the third quarter. Each team has scored. We came into this ball game through the first 13 games that these teams have played, combining for 26 wins and averaging 93 points per game combined. Now, Jeff Boyer said we got two number one seeds. That's the way it should be. Number one's making the title game. We got two guys that are really well coached teams. Different styles of offenses, and yet they land here at the University of Illinois. Ricky Messling, number 19, will get that call. Came into this game rushing for 1,053 yards, one of three 1,000 yard runners this year for head coach Jeff Boyer. So they talk about last year's semifinal loss to IC, quote, all the time. So it's Isaac Stickler, he'll be close to the first down. Stickler on the carry. So you have Stickler from the left wing, Snodgrass from the right wing. Messling in the backfield and you run behind an all state left tackle and Tyler Ellsbury. Your quarterback is 6'3, 185 pounds. He generally becomes your lead blocker. The tackle was on that stop. He had 18 total tackles in his first start of the season. We suffered Cole Reedy, who was out with an ACL injury for his ball club. Messling, short game. Right, uh, Nick Tackles is the uh, backup quarterback. All of a sudden, they tapped him on the shoulder and said, uh, you know, we need you after you, you said Cole Reedy went down. But 18 tackles in your first game on uh, the defensive side of the ball, that's ridiculous. Uh, you come in at 5'9", basically your, your focus has been on offense. Coach says we need you. He comes in, does the job. One of the leading tacklers in the secondary since his insertion into the lineup. Snodgrass cannot get to the outside. Good speed, but he's cut down right there at midfield on the stop for Monticello, number 51, at sophomore Caden Stinson. And Stinson holds the edge. What I mean by that is he sheds a block, and then he just makes sure that there's no way can a ball carrier get side of him. He forces back Snodgrass. Great individual tackle. Defensive ends, first priority, hold the edge. Don't let anybody get outside of you. Big third down here from midfield. Byron will be short. And now it will be a decision for Jeff Boyer. Keeping the offense out there. Six of 10 for Byron on third down. That one, I think he, he went with a leap a little bit too soon. He's about two yards back. He leaped over the line of scrimmage. Tigers need a yard for the first down here on fourth down. Key play, biggest one so far. Messling, the wrestling state qualifier will muscle and squirm, and this will be close. The initial hit stopped him. Well, I don't know. It'll depend on the spot here. Don't see many measurements anymore. This might be one. Not, not needed. Monticello fans did not like that ball placement. And Byron will quickly get back to the line. They scored on their opening possession here in the third quarter. And Carlson will drop it. But right there, right man, right spot, has been Carlson who found it. And I don't think that was weather related. I think at that point, Carlson might have just pulled away from the snap of Zach Lentz a little bit too quickly, trying to. Near side of the field, that's the Monticello side. 
Snodgrass is able to squirt free. He was hit behind the line, kept those feet moving. First hit may have come from Riley Austin. And Snodgrass able to squirt free and sets up a manageable third down. And once again, kudos to defensive head Caden Stinson, who turned that back as well, allowed his teammate to make a play. Cully Walter. And Monticello in his 10th season, he's made the playoffs every year. First time Monticello's reached the championship game. And speaking of reaching, that's what Snodgrass will do. And he will pick up yet another Byron first down. Watch this block by number 77, Tyler Ellsbury. And I'm sorry, i got to correct myself. Watch two blocks by Ellsbury. He pulls block number one. And there's block number two. And come on, little van, follow me. Because I'll get you to the sticks. Look at that size of that young man. He's a big boy. He's still got some growing to do. Just a junior with several Division I offers. First down, Tigers. Stickler. And this possession looks a lot like the first one here in the third quarter that led to a score. And once again, Stickler, the beneficiary, sorry to sing the praises once again, but another crushing blow by Ellsbury. Left tackle, he pulls, and this time leads Stickler to the right side. So versatile feet for the left tackle for Byron. Messling, thousand yard rusher who does the dirty work. You don't see hear that often, right? Those two words <laughs> going together. He'll carry for a couple. Let's check in with Edgy Tim. Hey guys, you're talking about Tyler Ellsbury and, and really the only thing he's missing at this point is pass pro. Don't run a whole lot of pass protection at Byron. Once he gets good with that, he's got all the attention in the world from literally every Power 5 school. Guys, back to you. Great point, Edgy. He's got great feet. You can't teach that. He goes and cuts a man down so that Messling can get close to that first down. Again, it will depend on the spot of the ball. There's Tyler Ellsbury, 6'5", 295 pounds. And when I said you can't teach that, it's a natural thing, but you can't improve on it and scheme it and practice it. And that young man has a huge upside. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> he just—he looks like a football player, doesn't he? He just looks like a football player. Get those guns out in the rain and cold. He came out in that hog trailer earlier <laughs> this year at Byron. I tell you what, if I was a running back, I'd be happy to follow him through the <laughs> hole. When you see a guy get a block on the edge, then downfield, and then the very next play, pull from the left side to the right side and kick out a linebacker, you're talking about one special hog up front. You saw how far Byron needs to go to pick up a first down here on fourth down. 12 plays, 43 yards so far. All of them, what else? On the ground. I think it might be 13 on the ground right here. <laughs> There you see 22 men on your screen. I think Messling maybe got it. I think he may have gotten forward progress, though. Oh, my. Everybody was stacked up, and so was Messling. Don't even want to speculate on no, this one. Nope. Mm, go ahead, speculate. <laughs> well, no matter oh. what, I think I think I think he moved the sticks with forward progress. But I tell you what, what a great job by Monticello. Yes, sack in the box, low pad level, not letting anybody be lowered. You got to stay lower than your opponent in this game. Monticello did a good job, but I think he may have had just enough forward movement. But no, no. For the second time tonight. The Monticello defense holds on fourth down, and they will get the ball back. Ricky Messling hit the hole, had a little bit of forward movement. You get a really good look at it here. Now, remember, it's the ball, and that is a spot. That's a 50-50 call. Let's call it as it is. Not right, not wrong. 50-50 call because it's not where the man has stood up. Is Did the ball break that plane? Well, the ruling will go Monticello's way. So the Sages have it with the three-point lead. Looking for something big. Did he stay in bounds? He did. The completion. Great catch 
on the near sidelines. Laid it right out there for Asher Bread, and he comes down with it, and he's a happy young man. Boy, he gets a smile. He deserves it. Way to stay in there right there on that 21-yard pass. But watch one foot oh, get down. Just a super camera angle and a great catch. They come out firing on first down and move the sticks. Snyder will have to watch the end result of that play from his backside. He was hit hard by Messling. You don't throw for 3,100 yards without being able to do just that. A little bit of room up the middle for Bundy. He's across midfield. Alec Bundy, a thousand yard rusher this year. And tonight he's done it on the ground, 100, or excuse me, in the air, 136 receiving yards, two touchdowns, but a little bit of a seam on the right side there. Nice vision, surveys, great agility shown, agility, the ability to change directions quickly. Bundy did that for the two to nine yards. He went behind number 74, Nick Wasson, 6'4", 230-pound junior. Second and short. Snyder with it again. He will have the first down, driven back. have been impeccable. He's reading the defense with the end crashes down. He keeps it himself. Final moments here of the third quarter. Each team has scored. Byron scored about three and a half minutes in to take a 14-10 lead. Two minutes later, Monticello goes on top 17-14. Snyder pulls it out of there and gives it right back to his running back, Bundy. Get about six yards. See, and that's one play setting up another play because with the read zone, Snyder had kept it himself two of the last four times, or two of the last three times. On the fourth play, now the defense starts to crash on the quarterback. He says, okay, you coming on me, and I'll kick it to my... My back, let him get some positive yards. It is the 3A championship game. We are anticipating a pair of 13-0 teams. We've traded the lead. And as we go to the fourth, it's 17-14 Monticello. We enter the fourth quarter in your class 3A state championship ball game. Monticello fell to Byron last year, 21-20 in the second round. But here with 12 minutes to play, the Sage is on top, 17-14. Done it with big plays here this afternoon, this evening. Right now, the Sages will be working against the wind. Snyder to keep. He gets about 15 yards before he's touched. First down, Monticello. Same play they run four or five times. As, as they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The zone read has been real effective right now in the decision-making. The cerebral ability to read the defense right now is just incredibly impeccable by this fine quarterback. In the semifinal against Carlinville, Snyder passed for five touchdowns, rushed for another. 13 rushing touchdowns this season, so he knows how to get it done on the ground just as well as over the top. About five yards on first down. Bundy got the call. So right now, Byron a little bit on his heels defensively, only because they can't key on either the quarterback or the running back right now. It's 50-50 guess in sleight of hand right now by Snyder, and the mess between he and his back has been very, very solid. After a pickup of five. Snyder able to stay in his feet. First down and more. Snyder inside the five yard line. The strength from the six foot 195 pounder Mark mentioned earlier. He runs like a fullback and this is a fullback run. Yeah, and look at the, the, the mess right there. That's what we call it. He decides to take it away from Bundy. I'll do it myself. 
And that's, again, predicated on what the defense gives. And he makes a good decision. And then he makes a couple good cuts. And then he makes a couple people miss. And then he gets it down to the three-yard line. And the huge crowd from Monticello loving what they see here in the rain. First and goal from the three for the Sages. Room to the outside, untouched, and a score for Monticello. The Sages get the third touchdown of the night from Alec Bundy, and the lead grows to nine. And Byron this time, the reason he was able to play, watch the middle blitz. One, two, three, four, five, six guys in the middle. They brought two linebackers right up the middle in the A and B gap each. They brought the linebackers into the seam. And so there was nobody home on the outside. He plays 75 yards and a march to 256 to make this now a definite two possession game. He's looking for the one extra point to make the lead go to 10. Tough snap, good hold, ball through, and Monticello takes a 24 to 14 lead. 14 of those 24 points have come after defensive stops on fourth and short. And this is Alec Bundy, two touchdown receptions, a touchdown run, and a 10-point lead for Monticello early in the fourth. How many high school teams can say that you have a former NFL player as an assistant coach on your sidelines? Well, we can tell you two teams here tonight. First man you saw was Sean Considine, the defensive coordinator for Byron. He was on that 1999 state championship team in Byron, went to play at the University of Iowa, eight-year NFL career with the Eagles, Jaguars, Panthers, Cardinals, and Ravens. Then there's Britt Miller. He played here at the University of Illinois. He played in the NFL with the Panthers, 49ers, and Rams. How special is that for high school players to play for a couple of longtime NFL pros? And how special is this return? Byron comes right on back. Zach Alberts all the way down near the 25-yard line when Byron needed it the most. And you say how special is that? That's special teams right there coming out in a big play. Three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. Okay, he gets on the first bounce, the, the blocking scheme set up. They have a left return. He makes one guy miss, and then there's a nice seam. And he puts his team in great starting field position to get back in this game. 27-yard line. 43 yards on that return. And we saw types of movement. The movement coming mainly from our referee, Roy Hinkamper. He saw something in that line he didn't like and did not want that ball snapped. And so we will just... Have a do over here. He showed some great speed. He, he showed speed and courage. Watch this. Watch. Here we go. This is about a 10 yard run for him camper. Here he comes and accelerating. Wow. <laughs> you know, we showed that hog trailer. He could have got in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Come along for the ride. All right. It's first down. Stickler with the flag down. And that would indicate early movement again. Two teams that have dominated their opponents all season long at 13 and 0. Dead ball. False start. On the offense. In the 25. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Okay, so that is the third false start slash illegal motion pull clock, pull clock. for Byron. But each time they have come up with a big play. yardage back plus 10 plus another that should be enough for a first down Tyler Ellsbury once again with the blowing block watch 77 the bottom of your screen pull he and his good old buddy teammate old number 66 at the same time Peyton Lynn with double team blocks from the left guard and left tackle good power football there blocking scheme Tigers quickly will snap it 
Stickler again. He'll get about five. We said a couple of teams, 13 0, they have not trailed very often this season, yet Byron chasing 10. The clock under 10 minutes to play in a 3 8 championship game. Stickler's ground yard is starting to grow. He's above 90 now. He gets the number called again. He will have the first down. First down and goal from the five. The kickoff return by Zach Alberts has set up this drive. And Byron taking advantage of it. Good picture, Stickler. Look at him. He wants to eat. He says, feed me. Give me the ball. Feed me. Show me that spoon again, young man, because you're running with authority right now and assertiveness. Going downhill right to the defense of Monticello. He will get it again. Picks his spot. At about the two. You see the extra little snap in the step of that Byron offensive line. They break the huddle and they are ready to roll. Watch him square his shoulders and downhill. And then he causes a little bit of contact himself. From the two yard line. This time it's Messling. And a late flag is thrown in the middle of that pile, I believe. Wait, or was there a fumble inside? Monticello says yes, but I don't think it's going to go the Sage's way. Devin Graham comes up with a football, but was it ruled down? I think that ball may have been snubbled, uh, fumbled in the exchange. You know, what came flying in was a beanbag. Let's take a good look at it here. Yeah, Messling never had it. It was actually a gain of a yard on that fumble. It's third and goal from the one yard line. Stickler's been running so well. I know they're diverse in all three guys, but might want to go with a hot hand here. Nope, they're going to go Snodgrass. And that's enough. Touchdown, Tigers. Drake Snodgrass, the touchdown run. His, and it's 24-20. His 22nd of the season starts at the right hash. It just takes a little toss sweep. Was able to have enough strength to get that ball into the end zone. Big extra point here coming up. And it is blocked. Number 59, Riley Austin. The four-year starter absolutely smothers this kick attempt by Aiden Lambert. Yeah, that was a six-play, 32-yard drive. They needed the six. They needed the extra point to make it three plays. But what a great block that was. A little bit of a high snap and taking advantage of it. Here's Snodgrass. From a yard out. Now he'll come your way. That cut the lead to four. Now the extra point attempt. Austin flying around that left side of the defense. Got every bit of that ball. Here he comes. Right off the edge. And we've talked about speed. There it was from special teams. You think of speed from receivers, from running backs. This time a special teams linebacker makes the play that keeps this a two possession game. For a one possession game, but they now would need a touchdown rather than a field goal. Ellsbury will tee it up. So we're going to see a 295 pound kicker. And he's coming at you straight on. This is old school right here, folks. The idea is as deep as you can get into the end zone and make Monticello go 80 yards. <laughs> yeah, you don't see that. You know, there's a, there's an award called the Lou Groves Award. <laughs> Lou Groves had the square kicking toe, <laughs> and he kicked straight on. Now, he's played offense. He's played defense. He's kicked off. Not much more you can do, Tyler Ellsbury. And he has to take a playoff here. Two changes shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. 
they had to make a specially special shoe for him. I don't don't know if they make square toe shoes anymore. <laughs> okay, get it off, lace it up. <laughs> Total offense right now: Byron, 64 plays, 340 yards; 33 plays, 304 yards for Monticello. Monticello with a four-point lead. We had a scoreless first quarter. Three touchdowns in the second and two more here in the second half. And three touchdowns in the second quarter, two in the third, two more here in the fourth. And Alec Bundy will move the chains. Uh, Bundy has had a whale of a game receiving, running the football, both sides of the ball. He's been very effective, and his receiving has really been the difference in this game thus far. And there's a young man that survived a terrible car accident this summer. Way to help take his team, his school, to their first ever state football championship game, and they are eight minutes away from claiming the title. 50 yards of rushing, 136 receiving. Sage is keeping it on the ground, and Byron is ready. Number 66, Peyton Lynn, number 77, Tyler Ellsbury. 535 pounds between them. <laughs> and we, we were singing their praises on offense last time. Two pulling, a pulling left guard, a pulling left tackle, and now they're playing on the interior where they call the one and three technique right smack dab in the middle of that Monticello line. One of the few times today that Monticello has faced second and long. Sages has spread the field. Oh, a dangerous pass. Colton Ingram right there. The 6'2 senior. Woo. A tough surveying right here for the quarterback because Snyder's looking at not one, not two, not three, not four, but five DBs for Byron there. They were a little nickel package in covers on the back end, and that's why there was not very many windows for him to get see through. It's third and 13. Under pressure. Snyder will be able to get rid of it. He will avoid the sack. But Monticello will not avoid a fourth down and 13. And this is a really good play by Snyder. He's getting flushed out and watch him get his arm up the ability to get rid of the football that would have been another what 12 14 yards of negative real estate had he not thrown that that will help this punt situation for the sages. And it will be Snyder to do the punting. The rain has stopped the wind has not he's punting into about a 15 mile per hour wind directly in its face. Alberts is deep for Byron. Pretty good kick here from Snyder. And Byron will have 63 yards to go for a go ahead score with 7.05 to play. Calm, cool, and collected. Coach Boyer, team takes on the persona of its coach. He won't panic, believes in his ground attack. They won't deviate from that. Ben Carlson, junior quarterback, will bring that play back to the huddle. Last time Byron touched the ball, they scored. There's Isaac Stickler, big gains. And he'll get another big gain on first down, about nine and a half yards. Well, when you have three backs that have each gone over a thousand yards, you find your hot back, and right now that's Isaac Stickler. Yeah, he's getting gassing yardage. 19 carries, 130 yards. He's been the go-to guy tonight. And you're right, they never know who it's going to be. He's in really good rhythm and good symmetry with this offensive line right now. They're feeding off each other. Carlson though, play action, sideline. 
And that was a 50-50 ball right there that Devin Graham cannot believe he did not come up with. Yeah, they had a little real route on play action. Good call on second down. They wanted to go downfield. Drake Snodgrass was the intended receiver. That ball was up in the air a little bit too long. You know, ben Carlson's only thrown one interception the entire season. That's amazing, game 14. Third in the yard. And that last play was pretty much a free play. Carlson avoided the interception. Messling will have the first down. Approaching the midpoint of the fourth quarter. He went behind number 70, Eric Hernandez. Another senior offensive lineman. Proper run after the sticks are moved. And not yet, even with the running game, not yet a factor. Plenty of time for Byron. A pitch to Stickler. Well, he has been angling right. And then a quick pitch here to the near left side. Three yard pickup on first down. It's a confident group right there. You see in that huddle. They won't waver. Get Monticello in the box again. They are really packed in. Look at that. Stickler will be three yards short of the first down. You don't come to many games where you see 22 players within three yeah. yards of the ball. Now, I'm not going to predict, but I will make this comment. Yes, they should be stacking the box. Yes, that's their game plan. If you get past the second level, you can go a long way if you're Byron. And illegal procedure will be the likely call here. And a third and three may become a third down and eight. Good ball. Ball starts. On the offense. Five yard penalty. Go third down. Well, that changes the perspective yep. of this call, but this is four down territory. Fourth penalty on Byron for 20 yards. Just one on Monticello. Talk about a well-played game. That's what we've had here today. Yeah, and I think every penalty has been procedure penalty. Yeah. no personal fouls. So it's all just been, and that was the right side of the line. That would indicate that's where that play was going to go to. Double tight end, of course. Wing T. Messling cut down at the line. He had some room. Number 55 at the bottom of the pile for Monticello. Lonnie Jordan. Or was that Henry Dawson? Dawson, leading tackler on this team, is a little bit of trouble there. He's going to stay in. And it's fourth down. Byron one out of four off four downs. And now they will stop the clock to get Dawson off the field. This is an injury timeout. So officials determined that Henry Dawson needed some medical attention here. You know, I'm not so sure that may have been Dawson in on that last tackle because he is holding his left wrist and forearm. And that's exactly what cut down Ricky Messling. Now, we cannot surmise what Jeff Boyer, who calls the plays, and his assistant, Kevin O'Neill, a Hall of Famer in his own right, might do right here. You may think this is a pass situation. Not always for Byron. Let's check in with Edgy. Edgy Tim on the sidelines for us. Let's see if he's available to give us an update. Guys, by the way, terrific timeout. You know, both these teams haven't really played four quarters much at all this season. A lot of fatigue out there. That was a very, very good timeout. And it comes with 432 to play here in the fourth quarter. Byron facing a fourth down and seven. Carlson will throw for it. And now he'll have to create. And once again, Monticello defense comes up big. The third time tonight. The Sages have stopped the Tigers 
on fourth down. Boy, a little double team tackle right there. Celebrations for Matt Kerr and Nick tackles a couple guys we've talked about that stayed right at home and made this play as Carlson was having to improvise. But two good tackles, bang, bang, to finish the deal. Each team with three timeouts left. And now it's all about the clock for Monticello. Can they get Bundy going along with Snyder in their zone read run game right now? Snyder throwing on first down, dangerous pass over the middle. The intended receiver was Brad. As indeed a gutsy call by Cully Welter. Everyone's thinking run, so he comes out and goes against the book, if you will, goes against the tendencies in the scouting report. Very fortunate that ball, once it popped in the air, was able to hit the turf. It does stop the clock. That only took three seconds off the clock. On second down and ten. To the near side. Cross midfield. Bundy. Put Monticello within about three, three and a half yards of a first down. Nice tackle by Tanner Klein, but Bundy gets this pitch outside the tackle, which means he had already broken contain on the pitch and then was able to get the ball yards, going third down, toward third the line of scrimmage downhill to get his momentum going. Watch the just right there. He gets the ball outside and then downhill. Good play call there. Huge third down with 4-10 to play. Monticello, 4 of 8 on third downs tonight. On the ground. The ball squirted free. I did not hear a whistle. Did Byron get it? All of a sudden, the ball squirted out of there. Tanner Klein says it's our ball. And our officials agree. Turnover, Monticello, Byron at the road, 45, 401 to play, down by four. Boy, they get the ball back and no timeouts used. When that drive started, you think Monticello needs to get a first down, make Byron call it, you know, one timeout, two timeouts, use her full allotment. Well, that ball was definitely loose and out of the hands of about five different players here. He always played an echo and a whistle. Byron kept doing that. Comes up 7 11. Stickler, short game. But back to your point, Mark, not using any timeouts. That possession only took 19 seconds off the clock. Yeah, and you know what? The clock always the trailing team's worst enemy, but especially a team that's, you know, running dimensionally as Byron is even more of a factor. Only a yard on first down. Again, 22 players tight on the line. Another short pickup. Snodgrass with a couple more. It will be third down and long. Henry Dawson injured on the last possession. That's the defensive play caller for Monticello, the leading tackler for the Sages. He's sitting this series out. Third and six. Stickler. It will be fourth down. Does Monticello have another fourth down stop in them? Interesting. They have chosen not to use a timeout here. Got a fourth down play, and the clock continues to run. 2:38 and moving. Well, this is the ball game right here, at least for Monticello fans. Fourth down and five. Byron has to get inside the 45-yard line. Here we go. Snodgrass. He has it. Drake Snodgrass, the first down. 
And the clock stops momentarily at 218. Great execution, fourth and five. Watch the counter action right there. Sticks his head up in the hole and watch him churn and now elongate the football. Puts it forward, know where the sticks are at. Great presence of mind to keep the drive alive. Stickler's gonna throw. Looking for Snodgrass. And it is intercepted. And who else but Alec Bundy <laughs> with the interception? <laughs> Mr. Everything, A.B. Alec Bundy tonight. Oh, my goodness. Stay right at home. I actually like the play call. Nowhere in the scouting report could this have been expected. We'll go out outside post corner. Oh, my and, gosh. Off the back of Snodgrass. Yeah, and Bundy stayed with the old tip drill. I think he's caught a few balls his life on the offense and defensive side. Watch the tip. Alive. And I-N-T. Three yeah. touchdowns for Bundy tonight and a spectacular interception with 2.05 left. Snyder all by himself across the 30. Byron will use a timeout. It's their first. It will come with 157 to play in this game. We have had an opportunity to be a part of an outstanding championship game here tonight. We still got a buck 57 left. Monticello needs one more first. They need one move of the chains. And they'll be faced with a second down at about two with this minute 57 left. Well, if you're enjoying this ball game, stick around. Coming up at about 7 o'clock, we'll have Class 4A, IC Catholic Prep, the two-time defending 3A state champion, moved up to 4A. They will take on rival Bishop McNamara. Those two teams played to a 21-20 game earlier in this year, but this year in 3A, your win trust play of the game, the play you saw just moments ago. The interception by Alec Bundy off this pass from Isaac Stickler. Three touchdowns tonight for Bundy. But that INT, the Red Trust play of the game. Yeah, that one will be archived forever in Sage history. That will be a first down. And the chains will move. No denying Bundy. Bundy now 47, 55 yards rushing, 136 receiving, and throwing an interception to go along with it. Byron will use its second timeout. There will be one timeout remaining. And they will have to go ball hunting here. In order to have a shot at it. We talked about the offenses of these two teams, but how about the defense for Monticello that has stepped up here tonight three times, stopping Byron on fourth down. And here with the interception. And Byron with 372 yards of offense. So you might say, well, that's pretty good. Monticello didn't stop him. That's very incorrect because Byron incredibly averages 48 points a game and over 500 yards of total offense so yes indeed they have kept them under control the message in that monticello sideline was hang on to the ball the rain has stopped we are dry right now Snyder will hand it off. The result of the play almost inconsequential. Except that Byron will use its third and final timeout with 144 left. Jeff Boyer along with his defensive coordinator, Sean Considine. Members of the 1999 state championship team will have to draw something up here 
on the defensive side to make sure the offense gets the ball back. There's Considine. He's telling them, first guy get the football, next guy try to strip it. Jeff Boyer says that as great a career as Considine has a running back and defensive back at Byron University of Iowa, he said he may be a better coach. And his relationship with his players is what makes him a great coach. Yes, he knows the X and O's. Yes, he's got a Super Bowl ring. But his ability to relate to his, to his players on the defensive side of the scheme. I know that Sean Considine watches a ton of film. Breaks down a preparation. And you were talking about Britt Miller's defense. I tell you what they've done. They've been up for yards. But the way to hold it. Powerful offensive team down. Keep explosives out of the end zone. If somebody gets a big playoff, you just don't let them score on it. They pitch it. This clock will run. It will be third down. Third and long. It's all about the ball right now. There are play clocks here, a luxury that you do not have on most high school stadiums. So Braden Snyder will be able to keep an eye on that clock. Nice job by Bundy. He saw the hit coming, so he went, made sure he got stayed in bounds. See if Monticello is going to call a timeout with one second to go on the play clock here. Except their third down play. They get that timeout. With 55 seconds left. Well, unless there is a magic play here, Byron should get this ball back. Great clock management by Cully Welter. He's managed a few clocks and winning schemes in his life. Cully Welter, 11 years at Alito, four at Ridgeview High School at Alito. Cully Welter won three eight titles and he is 55 seconds away from joining Tim Racky the head coach of Nazareth Academy who we will see tomorrow in class 7a joining Racky is the only coaches to win state championships at two different schools incredible achievement and he does it by perpetuating a program he's got freshmen and sophomores on the sidelines he does that every year he wants them to be around any kind of playoff run and he wants those young men to be excited to want to get back someday when they see the older guys having success. Monticello students out in full force. Their Thanksgiving break has taken them just a few miles away from their hometown here to Champaign. Third and long. Oh, a little bit of trickery here to pick up the first down. And Root in the outside and more. And they slide in safely. Forget a touchdown. Forget a longer game. The state championship is the goal. And that may have done it right there. What a gutsy call. And how well was that executed? And how smart was it, honestly, to go down? Because now you go victory instead of maybe some kind of get the ball punched out from behind or whatever. An incredibly smart play on a really good run by Asher Brad. There's Cully Welter. He knows he has a first down. <laughs> clock at 30, the play clock in single digits. And Monticello, the Sages, prior to this season, had been in the state semifinal game six times. They never won it. Sad times then for Monticello. Andrew devastating Andrew times here today for Byron. They shot a Justin Malone, who just can't believe what he's about to see because dreams come true and some dreams are shattered. And we saw a very, very good football team by two very good football coaches and two football clubs.
One knee is all it will take here for Monticello in its first appearance ever in a state championship football game to pick up the Class 3A championship. Clean step, the knee, and your state title in Class 3A in 2018 will go to Monticello. The Sages will celebrate here at Memorial Stadium. It was raining earlier on a soaking wet Cully Welter. This water feels great. A perfect 14-0 season for the Monticello Sages. And the huge contingent that came to Champaign, the short drive. They will celebrate here and all the way back home to Monticello High School. What a great complete game it was. They were outstanding in all facets of this football game. They played like a champion in all three phases. Cully Welter will win his second state title with two different schools, his fifth overall. He is absolutely drenched. And the final play of this game, a knee, a clean snap, down to the knee, Cully Welter the knee, and a Sage's victory. Great ball game here in your Class 3A championship. Monticello, its first state championship in football, 24-20 win over Byron. And one of the reasons why our country financial player of the game, Alec Bundy for the Sages. This came early in the second quarter. Short pass, long run, 95 yards later. Bundy with the 7-0 Monticello lead. He wasn't done, you see his numbers. 52 yards on the ground, 136 in the air. This was touchdown number two for Bundy. Maybe his biggest play of the game came right there, the interception to stop the Byron drive. And right now our country financial player of the game, Alec Bundy, is standing by with Edgy Tim O'Halloran. Again, Alec Bundy, did you wake up this morning and think, well, I'm going to score two rushing touchdowns, three interceptions in a state title game? I did not. I was just thinking, get out there, do your job. I knew all, the teammate, all my teammates were going to do their job. I knew I just needed to try and do mine best that I could, and it turned out good for us. You're going to walk us through that last interception. I mean, rolled off the kid's back, and, and did you? how did you play that ball? I was a little down on myself before that, fumbled twice before that, just previously on that play before that, and then it just, I saw that guy coming out, running a corner, and I saw it up in the air, I just knew I needed to go jump in it and make up for the mistakes I made. What does it mean to you, your team, and this town in Monticello? It means a lot. It's never been done before. It's just crazy to have it done and it's crazy to be a part of it. Have you ever thought about running for mayor? Because you might be able to after this. <laughs> I have not. Maybe I will, though. I don't know. Alec, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to try to get Coach Coley. Oh, here he is. Coley, Coach Coley, what does this mean, certainly to you, but for the, really this entire town of Monticello? Yeah, uh, to me, uh, I'm getting old, so I know people find this hard to believe, but I just like spending 14 weeks with my kids, win or lose. And this was a great game to be a part of, win or lose, but I'm just really happy for my kids. I'm really happy for my assistant coaches and just really happy for the community. Again, congratulations. Thank Go you. celebrate with Thank your you. team. Thank you, I will. Guys, we'll send it back up to you. All right, thanks, Edgy. You know, what a great story, Mark. Alec Bundy is our country financial player of the game. Alec Bundy survived a terrible car accident this past summer. They did not know whether he'd be able to survive. He did. He's here. What a year for that young man. And you know the word he used when talking to Edgy Tim twice? Twice he said, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And perspective, he went through that, and it culminated after the difficulties a young man and the family went through to this memory he has tonight. You know, and how great was this ball game? You talk about two evenly matched teams who offensively did things in opposite ways. In the end, Monticello, with the 24-20 win, 
total yardage. Byron outgained Monticello only 372 to 354. And how many times have we said that, you know, you talk about all the offense, but in the end, the defense is the answer. And with this, the defense enables Monticello to pick up the state championship and they get the medals draped around their necks. Great game, great game to be a part of and memories made by both these communities. It went down literally to one last first down and Monticello ultimately got to take a need to finish the deal. Great 3A game. We're not done yet here from Memorial Stadium here tonight. You have Class 4A action coming up. That will match IC Catholic Prep. They will look to hoist their third state championship, but tonight, at the moment, this night belongs to Monticello. The Sages, your Class 3A state champions. The trophy presentation brought to you by Menards, and that trophy doesn't have to travel too far. They'll head down the road to Monticello High School, and that will be one for the ages and for the Sages. Players making their way off the field, but not before turning to the near side crowd. Full force, the estimates of 6,000 fans making their way here to Memorial Stadium, and they got what they came for, that first place trophy. And Braden Snyder carrying that right now. He had a whale of a game in his own right. Threw for 213 yards, two touchdowns, ran the zone read incredibly well, made really good decisions. What a leader he is, and he's leading right now by walking the trophy toward the Monticello locker room where it will head back to their community. Well, those folks will clear out. They will make room for Bishop McNamara and IC Catholic fans. It will be a rematch in Class 4A between a game earlier this season that IC Catholic won 21-20. But here tonight in Class 3A, Alec Bundy, big time, both sides of the ball, Sages history in Monticello. Coming up next, you're going to get our IHSA Greatest Game Series back in 2011. Rochester and Richmondburg, Richmondburg for the 4A state championship. We'll relive that. We'll get ready for 4A. Congratulations to Monticello, 24-20 winners over Byron in 3A.